You know, it's funny. Recently, Elon Musk did an interview with the Wall Street Journal, and he made the statement in reference to the government that the government is simply the biggest corporation with the monopoly on violence. And we're just going to take a quick listen to what he has to say and his logic behind it. Um, then, you know, at some point, really what you're doing is capital allocation. So you're not, it's not money for personal expenditures. It's, it's it, what you're doing is, is capital allocation. And it does not make sense to take uh, the, the job of capital allocation away from people who have demonstrated great skill in capital allocation and give it to, uh, you know, an entity that has demonstrated very poor skill in, in capital allocation, which is the government. Uh, I mean, you can think of the government essentially uh, as a corporation in the limit. Uh, it, it is, it is a, the government is simply the biggest corporation with a monopoly on violence and with and where you have no recourse. Can so how much money do you want to give part? that entity? Um, and so for people wondering, like what he said is factual and it's, it's legit. What he said is actually legit. So why is Elon Musk talking about this now? He's been the beneficiary of the parasitic relationship of the state by getting a lot of the credits, right? A lot of the tax credits. The one of the biggest reasons why, you know, Tesla has been so profitable profitable is because of all these government basically taking money and printing money and giving it to companies like Tesla for the narrative of EV vehicles. And it's just because at the end of the day, they realize that they eventually eventually they come for you. And so towards the end of Elon Musk's and his reign as the king of EV vehicles, Joe Biden started giving special privileges to union-backed companies, like, for example, Ford and GM. And Elon Musk was anti-union. There was an attempt, and he called it a coup. If you've seen some of his older interviews, he called it a coup. Literally, he called it a coup within his company, where some individuals were trying to push for unions and of course you know unions are some of the biggest lobbyists in government it's one of the reasons why there's lack of competition and competition spurs innovation but when you have unions and you have the ability to shut down businesses like look what happens for example with in new york right whenever the subway workers would go on strike Without fail, a couple of months later, they would, you know, renegotiate that they were going to get a pay raise and the fares would go up. So it's just a legal shakedown. All it is is the, the, the legal ability of a large group of people to shake down the company or if it's within the state to shake down the state for more money, which just passes the buck to the taxpayer. It's just a way to steal from people legally. And so that's what unions are. So instead of you being an individual, being responsible and you putting out hard work and excelling, you rely on the union to get a raise. It's not that you per se have added more to the company, but we as a whole are worthy more. And it's just a form of socialism. And so Elon Musk, when, while he was the beneficiary of it for quite some time, his his company got introduced into the S and P. He got pushed. Of course, that pushed the price up because now all these different hedge fund managers were forced to buy the stock, even though the company doesn't make any money. Even though, by comparison to what the company is worth, to the amount of shares and to what the company makes, there's just no, there are no fundamentals. To this company it's just narrative it's just narrative that has driven elon musk and tesla and now of course now that he's been made wealthy if you if you listen to the story of elon musk elon musk and his rise is very similar to bill gates how bill gates stole microsoft from his cancer-stricken partner at the time and there's a very similar story with elon musk now to be somebody in the system of things, you have to be willing to give up something, right? You can't be the country or the cities or the government's, you know, go-to prize pig without giving something up. And now, 
Elon Musk is realizing that eventually what happens under socialism is that they eventually they come for me. And so, of course, Elon Musk is upset. He's been kicked out of China and had uh, his technology, what do they call it, uh, intellectual theft, which is basically how what China does. And Elon Musk was going out to China, He's a smart guy, but not very street smart. And of course, he got his shit stolen in China, and China was like, "Fuck up, out of here. We don't need you anymore. We got, we got your, we got, we got the plans, right? And now we, you know, we know what is it? We know the recipe. We know what's in the sauce. And so now they can just, we just make it on our own. And of course, he fell out of favor in China. So then he tried to crawl back over to America, and America was like, "We ain't got no unions. We can't do nothing much for you." And so then he went over to Germany. Etc. And this has been the story of Elon Musk, just making one gigafactory to the next and producing next to nothing uh, as a result. And so he has all these different little things that he wants to do. Big brain, but not a lot of street smart. It's not a lot of street smart. Made wealthy via fiat currency produce production, but not a, not a result of him producing solid vehicles. Especially if you just understand how lithium batteries work and that they're not biodegradable. They can't be destroyed. They can't be broken down over time. They're just another source of pollution. You do a little more research and you start to understand where, where does lithium come from? Where does the where, where is it all these supplies? Thing? Is it a mine? Child labor? What? But that's another story for another video. And of course... The narrative is always the same thing, that the left, they eat their own. And Elon Musk is in the eyes. He's in the, he's in the, oh, the bullseye, right? They've got him in their scope, and they're just waiting for something, for a reason to take him out. At least at least from a societal standpoint. They want him to fall out of favor, which is why, hey, look, just look at Bitcoin, just look at Dogecoin, right? When they need him to do something, they're like, hey, we need you to use your... We need you to rile up the normies, right? I mean, just got to put it all together. But this is where we're at. And so Elon Musk may be having a little crisis of conscience. And so he's trying to alert the normies, but it's a little too late. It's a little too late. It's a little too late. We're deep into socialism. And the end result is communism. And a lot of these movie stars you hear about, movie stars, that we're going to make a bunker somewhere, we're going to buy an island, we're going to try to hold it down. But they eventually come for you. That's why, what's his face? What Tom Hanks, he flew out, one of the first things he did, he flew out to Greece. He's like, I'm getting up out of here. I know, I know the writing on the wall. And it's time to go. They just dipped early. People like Elon Musk, they're trying to wait down to the bitter and hoping that things are going to change. And it's just not going to happen. We're descending into slavery, old school slavery. We're going way back, right? And some people have a crisis of conscience. Some people like this is, you can see it in his face. You can see it in his face. Some people just have a crisis of conscience, but it's too late. You are part of the beast system. And it is what it is. It is what it is. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. And I'll check you next time. Thanks for watching.